Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author, Dr. Friedemann Schaub from Empowerment Radio as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges in our day-to-day lives. Find out how you can use the power of your mind to overcome self-sabotaging patterns and build a solid foundation of confidence and self-respect. Learn cutting-edge tools and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. This is the time to empower yourself. Now, here's your host, Dr. Friedemann Schaub. Thank you for tuning in and also thank you for watching the show live on my Facebook outlet. I appreciate that. And what you hear in the background is my unruly cat who just wants a little attention. So either I have to kick her out or I have um, to ignore her for now. Let's try to ignore her, (laughs) which I don't think that it's really so easy. Well, Today, I want to talk about something that is around the corner, which are the holidays. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, there is a recurring dream I had always around December. Now, it's not the dream of sitting uh, without clothes in the school bus, which I also had, or losing teeth, or being in a math test and uh, somehow forgetting that you um, had to study and not knowing any answers of the test. These are all dreams that are recurring, and unfortunately, sometimes they are still showing up. But in December, I had that dream, which was very simple, one storyline. I had forgotten to buy any presents to any of my loved ones, parents, my partner, my sister. Oh, my God. So usually I woke up. I got into a panic. I ran the next day to the stores or ordered something online and uh, exhaled. Now, the problem with presents, as you may have noticed, is that even though in the moment you get them or you give them, you know, you get a little smile. There is a little, oh, wow, that is nice. But especially around the holidays and Christmas, where there is such an overwhelming amount of those gifts everywhere, you do actually have the feeling that they somehow go in and out of the memory box very quickly. So with my parents, it was usually, and it's still the same with uh, my wife, Danielle. I asked, so what did I give you for Christmas? Do you still use that present? And as an answer, there is usually a blank stare following. And I have to admit, sometimes it happens to me as well when they ask me. But at the end, it was apparent, well, maybe this present wasn't really that important. Not that it was a nice, it was a nice gesture, not that they didn't appreciate it or didn't appreciate it in the moment, but maybe it wasn't that important. So it took me and my sister and also Danielle a little bit to figure out that, especially when it came to visiting my parents on, on the holidays, It's really not that important to give them anything that they already have or don't really need. There is something more important than that, which is the gift of our presence. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't until the last Christmas with them that we really followed through, that we weren't really trying to give them all these lavish, uh, you know, offerings, but instead we offered our best selves. Now, what that means and how to get there, that's what I wouldn't talk about today in the show, because I have to regretfully admit that I, until my probably 30s, wasn't always my best self when I went home for the holidays. I had more an experience like Jamie, who wrote, every year, it's the same with me. That's what she said, but I can relate to this. And maybe you can relate to this too. I'm excited about the holidays and look forward to visiting my parents and siblings, which I don't see more than two or three times a year. But less than 48 hours after my arrival, I have already argued with my dad about politics. These days, very common. Been annoyed with my mom 
about doting on everybody and being envious of my brother, the golden child who always seems to get away with whatever he wants. So within two days, I managed to revert back from a grown woman to a cranky teenager who looks, locks herself in a her room and can't wait for the holidays to be over. Now, haven't you had that experience too? That somehow you have the best intentions, you look forward to spending time with family, and then somehow you revert back into these patterns as if something you know, unconscious, something deep inside is taking over, taking you on remote control. It can be the button pushing. It can be that you are judgmental. It can be that you are looking at your family and feel like, once again, you don't feel understood. You don't fit in. You don't feel appreciated. Now, a lot of people feel this way. In a poll, there were about 40 to 50% of the interviewed people complaining about having more stress and anxiety around the holidays than at any other time of the year. Now, of course, there are the usual suspects. You have the stress with the gift giving, as I said. There is also the overspending, overeating, overdrinking, overgiving. And then there is the lack of self-care, all of it contributes to that feeling of overwhelm and stress. But one of those factors, I do believe, has a lot to do with that what inside of us gets triggered when we are with our family of origin, when we are revisiting those people that may have installed those patterns in the first place. And we are going back into modes and ways of dealing with those people that looking back, we're not always the proudest of. You don't always feel that great about. Now, what is the best self though? Does it even exist? Now, when I said as the, the show title, give the gift that keeps on giving the best self, I'm not talking about that perfect version of yourself that is really hard to keep up and uh, you only do this to please others. And I don't really believe that there is necessarily one best self because there's always room for improvement. And sometimes we have to admit that despite our greatest efforts, and maybe because of the wounds and pains and rifts in the past, there is no way to really fit in or feel connected to your family of origin. And in those cases where you just feel like, I'm done, I'm complete, that's all you can do. And you take the responsibility to learn, to heal, and to grow from those wounds of the past. But in other cases, and there's maybe the majority, where you just know, I come home and somehow I let mom take care of me do my laundry, do all the kitchen stuff. And I'm just sitting there watching football. Or I come home and I look around and I get disgusted by whatever I see, the bad food they're eating, the bad habits they're having. And you go into this rebellious mode. Or you go home and you feel like, well, now I have to prove myself and I have to show up with all these great accomplishments that I have so that I get a little bit of of appreciation or acknowledgement. Talking about patterns that you know at the end you somehow regret. And that was certainly the case for me when I look back at my parents and if I would have not had this time of trying to be a better self and feeling that there is that room for improvement, I probably would have had more regrets when this was our last Christmas together. When we come back, we will talk more about the best self. And I want to just share a few ways and a few, yeah, tools with you that help you to have already a clear idea of what this could be. Because what's at stake is really the time that we have. I talked with a client yesterday who was like many of us, super busy, 
very much focused on getting ahead with her work and her career and forgetting completely that her relationship was somehow, you know, down by the wayside. There's something we do take for granted that sometimes simply needs more attention. And I do believe that our family is one of those things that just sometimes we'll take for granted and we just go back and don't even make a great effort. And in the end, we realize, well, the time we have is limited. And that is really the most precious thing we can give ourselves that time together in a way that everyone is experience more closeness, more harmony, more understanding, and ultimately more love. Now, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you your stories about maybe your Christmas or holiday nightmares, maybe things that you felt like, you know, at some point I outgrew something that always bothered me or was always challenging from my folks or my siblings, and now I'm doing this differently. If you have something to share or if you have a question on how to deal with a specific situation that seems challenging around coming back to visiting the family or having the family visit you, call 1-800-930-2819. Again, that's 1-800-930-2819. Or you got just typing your question in the chat box on TransformationTalkRadio.com. All right, well, we'll be right back. We are talking about being your best self as the gift that you can give your loved ones during the holidays. Now, let me give you an example of how not to be, which was how I used to be, which especially was, I think, quite painful for my mother. Now, my mother had installed some buttons on me that were about making me do something that I actually didn't want to do. Now, those buttons were very sensitive because she pushed them quite a bit. So every time I came home, after 48 hours or less, she came up with the idea that I should call, let's say, the next door neighbor who used to be a friend when I was in elementary school. Or I should call some distant uncle that I haven't heard of from a long, for a long time. She said, why don't you call Holger? I said, yeah, sounds good. I'm calling later. Well, later was for my mother five minutes. And then she said, well, why don't you call him now? I said, well, I'm just having breakfast. Can I do this later? 10 minutes later, well, but you know, he's waiting. He's waiting for you. I'm sure that he would love to hear from you. Now, you can imagine that after a while, you just get into this mode of, please leave me alone. And unfortunately, I wasn't doing this with a smile. It took me four or five of her little pushes to have a real explosion. And I'm not proud of that. But that pattern I have observed over and over and over again. And do you think I changed it? Do you think I prepared myself for it? Do you think I tried to have some idea on how can I respond when she puts out that specific demand? How can I be a source of calmness rather than a little pressure cooker? But it took me again until this very last time where I simply realized all that she wanted me was to put her at ease because she was just a very worried and anxious person. So when I really gave her something specific, not just a, well, maybe later answer, but yes, after breakfast, I go down there. All of a sudden, she was calm. She was reassured. She felt better. And it was that kind of anxiety that my mother had that then I also had so much more compassion for because I knew it wasn't a way just to try to control me or make me feel, you know, that uh, I needed to do something in order to get her approval. It was really just her having a little, you know, idea in her mind that she could obsess about and make bigger and bigger and bigger. And then became a problem that she wanted 
me to fix. And when I really helped her to ease that anxiety through helping her to not be afraid that this neighbor or this uncle will be forgotten, she was visibly more at ease. And that is one of those things that I feel like I could have figured out much earlier. Now we have a caller, Art, who has also something to share about his experience of being the better self, I assume. Hi, Arch. Thanks for hey, calling Dr. in. Schaub. Great to so be nice here. to hear you. <laughs> always. Ditto. Ditto. Hey, my question for you is around old reference points and identities that we associate with family members and perhaps they associate with us. And a lot of times over the holidays, you know, maybe a considerable amount of time has gone by since we've interacted with these family members, and they still maybe see us for who we once were versus who we've evolved to be, and how that can sometimes, can that sometimes put us in a position to, to be maybe a little more self-conscious and self-focused versus the, the intention of being really present with family and appreciate their identities, uh, their new identities, maybe their same identities, but just being having going in with a little less judgment and a little less um, hooked hookedness onto old reference points. What's your what's your perspective on that? Well, it sounds like what you're saying is that you feel sometimes, or like many people misunderstood or that you have grown and you have changed and then there is the same old box waiting for you at home that people seem to stuff you in and see you as and make their remarks and maybe even their jokes about even though you're far beyond. Is that something along those lines? Absolutely. They're opening your gifts. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things that I find is so important is to have this intention of what it is that you want to share with the family. Now, the best self that we talk about can also be the one that wants to share the most authentic version of yourself. Because often we have grown and we have changed and we have new ideas but we are not necessarily having the courage to openly have the family be a part of it and openly share it. And so we hold ourselves back and we don't give others really the, the time and maybe not really the information to learn to know us in this new way. Now, here's an example. My, my, I was, uh, like many of you know, raised by a family of doctors and of course, I had to become a doctor too. And at the point when I changed from being a doctor to becoming a researcher and from becoming a researcher to doing the work as you can call a coach or therapist or whatever you want to call it, of course, there was this time where my old identity wasn't really uh, any longer that what my parents could see, but they had a hard time to really get used to my new identity or my new work. And so it took an effort. The first time I shared with my father that, hey, I'm leaving medicine and I'm really working more with the subconscious and helping people to heal from the inside out with the mind-body connection and so on, he didn't talk with anyone for 48 hours. Now, after about six months of gradually explaining and gradually just giving him the opportunity to learn to know more about what I'm doing and why it's interesting to, uh, for me and what the benefits are and why there is passion for me in that, he warmed up to the idea and he became more interested in and he did some research on his own about it. And so if I would have just been standoffish and feel like, okay, you're not accepting me you don't really know who I want to be, that's fine. There would have been always a little wall. But giving just people the time to get used to the new you and giving them more information from also that truth within 
why we chose this path or why we have changed and how we see this as an opportunity and how this is benefiting us and making us more fulfilled or happy. If people really care and love you like my dad did, and I'm sure your folks do too, they really will be happy for you. And they will really warm up to the idea. And it's not something that may happen like a light switch. It may take a little time, but eventually I do believe it's one of the greatest gifts we can share with people to share our growth with them, to share with them who we became and who we uh, evolve into. And, and that's you know what you also want to have from others. Thank you for giving me my very first Christmas gift of the season. <laughs> and no it's me. That's exactly right. Uh, thank well, thank you for calling in. And, uh, and really also, you know, look for those gifts in others as well, because chances Absolutely. are there are people that have changed and they may still be seen in that old way by you. And so, yep. you know, one of those uh, best self uh, ways is also to have this curiosity to just see everyone with a fresh eye, have a complete open mind and ideally an open heart to find out more. So what happened in this year and how do you feel? And, you know, what's your thinking? And how are your beliefs? And, and just not keeping it on the surface, but going a little bit deeper. That is something that is incredibly rewarding and also deeply connecting. Yep, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy holidays. You too. Bye-bye. Well, that is one of those things that uh, I feel we have to do is to have this intention, the intention to already know who do I want to show up as? And this may be that person that grew into a new career or has just made some big uh, steps on a personal level in regards to growth, but it can also just be the person who says, no, I don't want to be that person I used to be. I don't want to be the one who used to be the avoider, who just, as Jamie did, locked herself in the room and and didn't want to deal with anyone because there is a great feeling of either being judged, rejected, criticized, or just not understood. And you don't want to necessarily be that pleaser who always just gives and gives and overdoes and, and eventually ends up in resentment and feeling like that, uh, you know, everything you gave didn't get really uh, re returned in appreciation or gratitude. You don't want to be the person who is... Uh, having to prove yourself to everyone and boast about your successes because you need approval or the one who is controlling and judging. This is often the parents who are looking at their uh, grown-up children and still see them as little teenagers and in the end may still feel like, well, you have right now your feet under my table, so you do as I tell you to do and as I used to tell you to do for 18 years. All of those patterns may no longer serve you. And as well, that pattern of being the rebellious one who always wants to somehow get attention through being different, standing out, or not really belonging. All of those old patterns are ultimately survival patterns. They are patterns that helped us early in our lives, but they certainly no longer help you because they create the same results as they have created before which is usually conflict or a sense of feeling disconnected or disappointed or drained or misunderstood. So after the break, we'll talk about how you can turn those patterns around and other ways for you to take responsibility over how you want to show up during the holidays. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Being your best self being that person that has an awareness and takes responsibility over however you want to show up and what you want to share with your loved ones during the holidays. That's what this show is all about today. 
if you have any questions or if you would like to work on yourself, if you feel like, well, you know, I want to be my best self, but for some reason I can't, there is some subconscious pattern, belief, or maybe some baggage that I just cannot let go of. I have tried everything. Set up a free consultation with me at thefearandanxietysolution.com and I can help you to overcome those patterns, to change those beliefs, and to have it much easier to really find peace, acceptance, confidence, and love for yourself so that you have all those things also to share with those that you care about and that are important to you in your life. Now, we talk about these old patterns and so how you can change them. So what I should have done when I was in my 30s and what I didn't do was setting an intention. So before you even go into this holiday at times craziness, sit down, think about, okay, what are those patterns and habits and situations that seem to like Groundhog's Day come up over and over and over again? And what can I do to change them? So if you are the avoider who easily gets hurt because you're very sensitive and you feel easily when people are maybe a little snide or make fun of you or anything that hurts you and would put you into a corner, allow yourself simply to go and have time to recenter yourself. Allow yourself to not feel bad and think about others while you take a time out, but really bring yourself back to yourself, but then also realize that no one can really hurt you unless you allow them to hurt you. So whatever happened there is just an opportunity for you to ask whether this is really who you are or if it's just something that someone's projecting onto you. And then engage again. Engage with that realization, yes, I'm sensitive, but that also gives me an advantage because I can feel other people, and I can understand where they are coming from. And maybe in this whole turbulent uh, uh, group of people, I can see there is one person who feels left out, or one person who feels she's hiding something, or some person who feels there is something that seems to bother him. And that is a person you want to focus on. That is a person with your sensitivity and your ability to feel and sense is the one that you want to share your gift with of just listening of being there, being compassionate. And then from there, you can gain that sense of belonging, that sense of making a difference, and that will ripple out also into your other relationships. When you feel that you're the pleaser, realize that you are taking something away from others by not allowing them that gift of giving to you. This is something my mother was really good at. She kicked us always out of the kitchen and she was slaving away and never allowing us the pleasure of helping her. So be the one that is pleasing yourself and pleasing others by creating teamwork, by creating that support network during the holidays or just letting yourself be a little bit taken care of and notice how good it feels to others to give back to you. When you are the person who is always having to somehow show how far you came or how much you have accomplished and you need that sort of approval, just hold yourself back. Just know that you need to give yourself this. You need to celebrate your accomplishments. You don't need from anyone else to have a pat on the back, but maybe You want to appreciate other people's accomplishments. You want to be curious what they did. You don't want to be that overshadowing figure that everyone feels small with, but you want to be the person, since you know how to be successful, who is building others up to also reach their goals and be successful. If you are the one who feels more like you need to control, micromanage, and that can sometimes also be through judgment or through wanting people to be a certain way, practice compassion, practice understanding, practice this openness where you simply accept that you're all different and that everyone has their own path and there is no need for you to 
force anyone to be a certain way. You can simply be, what I mentioned before, curious, open, and letting go of this control and letting compassion and acceptance in. In this way, also letting that guard down that you may have held in front of you. And then if you're rebellious and you always want to be different, use this rebellious energy to mix up the family in a positive way by maybe introducing games or doing something different or just getting them a little bit out of their old patterns and crusty shells, but with the intention that this is about getting together and being together rather than you setting yourself apart. Now, these are only a few patterns that you can think about, and you may have even better ideas on how to use what you're good at, but what also was often separating you from others or making you feel more in that old survival pattern and use that power to actually create more connection, more community, and more harmony amongst those that you're going to visit or that will visit you. Now, another wonderful tool and uh, I think a great way of intending to be that better self is that unbridled kindness that a client of mine inspired me to really think about and, uh, and see this as an opportunity for all of us to use. Now, he told me this story and he has worked on himself and he really felt that from being more in that shell and sometimes angry and sometimes bitter and sometimes judgmental, he felt much more open to the world. He felt this is really my opportunity to shine and shine my light on others. Well, with all this in mind, he came to the grocery store one day and, you know, staying in the checkout line, waiting for people to get, uh, you know, work through, checked out. There was a man in front of him, older gentleman, who had a whole bunch of groceries. Now, behind this man was, uh, well, the one right in front of him was a young guy, young guy with a sandwich and a soda. Now, the older gentleman saw the young guy being a little impatient, being a little stressed, maybe having to go back to work. So he just let him pass by with a smile. Now, the young guy barely noticed it, just nodded his head, paid, went off his way. But my client, who really saw this kindness in this older man, saw that it really just created a lot of pleasure in this gentleman. He just felt really great. I did a good deed. I feel good about my random act of kindness. And so my client saw that and felt inspired to just also give and pay forward a random act of kindness and pay this man's groceries. Now, at that moment, there was a little debating club happening inside of his mind. And he said, well, you may insult this man. Are you crazy? You cannot just pay everybody's groceries just because you let somebody go. And who knows? But at some point, he did a technique, which I find very fascinating. It's something that he was watching someone explaining on YouTube. He couldn't remember the name. But basically, it's a technique where you count down from five to zero. And on zero, you just do whatever your heart tells you, whatever you feel inspired to do. And in this context, whatever you feel as a random act of kindness, that's what you want to share. And so he counted down five, four, three, two, one, zero, lift off. And excuse me, sir, can I pay for your groceries? I just noticed what a wonderful thing you did here. I think we need more of those random act of kindness in the world. And I want to just show you my gratitude for being such an inspiration. Well, this man just lit up like a Christmas tree, was super happy, and my client was happy because he followed his heart. Now, how many times are you in a situation where you have the impulse to say thank you, maybe to your mom or give her a hug, or you have the impulse to sit down with your sibling and have a deeper conversation about something in the past, or you feel like you want to share something from the heart, whether it's gratitude or whether it's something where you just let people in. 
How often do you have those impulses that are not logical, that are not planned, they are just coming from your deepest self? And you block them. Just don't do it. Just feel like, ah, tomorrow, that's too vulnerable. That's too mushy. I can do it another time. I don't feel like it. And how many missed opportunities are there where you could have shown these random acts of unbridled kindness? See, I think there are countless opportunities when we get together with our families and friends where we can show up with greater kindness, when we can let our heart take the lead, and when we can also let other people in our heart more than we usually are used to. The word kind from its origin means natural. And I believe that kindness has also to do with being our natural, authentic self and giving others that kindness of seeing really who we are, seeing our vulnerability, seeing our lovability, and seeing also how much we do enjoy giving love, helping, showing that we care, and maybe being touchy-feely, even though it may be a little bit poo-pooed, but ultimately it is something that everyone enjoys. My family didn't give each other hugs until my wife, Danielle, entered into the scene. And the first time she met my parents, she just hugged them. And I remember my dad, he was stiff like a, a tree. He didn't know what to do with it, but I could also feel that he actually enjoyed it. And from that time on, all of a sudden, we became huggers. Everybody wanted it, but somehow no one took the initiative until her. So unbridled kindness. Next time when you see your family and you want to show love, you want to be helpful, or anyone, it can be your colleague, it can be the person on the street, it can be a stray cat that you see always around the house, show that kindness, make it a habit, and see that as a way to become your better self. When we come back, we will also go into a brief guided meditation that sets you ready, that gives you a choice on how you want to give the gift of your best self during this holiday season. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. Uh, give yourself permission to be your best self, the gift that keeps on giving and as we just talked about, unbridled kindness is one of those being responsible for your emotions, your beliefs, your patterns, your thoughts, how you want to show up is another one. Now, the third step or the third uh, way for you to really get the most out of this holiday season for yourself and others is that committed self-reliability. And what I mean with that is that during the holidays, most people fall into the same trap, which is they stop taking care of themselves. They stop going through the routines they usually like to, whether it's a meditation, whether it's maybe working out, whether it's eating healthy, going early to bed, not drinking too much. Somehow we give ourselves a complete free pass. And we are pigging out, for lack of a better word, and unfortunately losing more and more connection with our center and our well-being because of it. It's a very unhealthy pattern that I feel also is then making us often react in the not best self way because we do feel out of sorts. We feel we have a either food coma hangover or we have an emotional hangover because we didn't have time to really process or release. So just have that sense that, well, usually I blame everyone else for being cranky when I have actually not taken care of myself. And I want to be my best self by also having this self-reliance. And I tell others, I need a nap. I tell others, I need to go for a walk. And I'm not afraid of taking care of myself because taking care of myself doesn't take anything away from anyone. In the end, it actually gives them more of my best self. Now, 
we don't have a lot of time. So I want to just go through this little process, which allows you to set your intentions more clearly. It's just a brief guided meditation that I find very helpful whenever we go into a new endeavor. And in some ways you could say, well, this new self becoming that gift that keeps on giving is a new endeavor. So why don't you get comfortable and close your eyes unless you're driving, but close your eyes if you can. Take a nice deep breath. Just relax into this moment. And allow yourself just to connect to that place inside of you that is creating with your intention, with your imagination, with your creativity, your future. And I want you to imagine that you're standing at a path and that this path had a fork in the road. And you see on the left side now, the path that is that well worn out path of your old patterns, that old maybe limited self. And I would like you just to watch yourself this holiday season going down once again this path. Without judgment, without an emotional attachment, just watch how you would once again go into all these different kinds of being that at the end may drain you in the end may make you feel insecure, frustrated, stressed out, anxious, or maybe even feeling guilty. Just notice what are the thoughts, the emotions, the actions, and the beliefs that you have when you are on that path. And then see yourself being back from the holidays or having everyone left, sitting by yourself, having survived, but realizing that once again, there is a sense that it could have been better. A sense maybe of missed opportunity. Maybe a sense of once again, regret. And then look on the right side. That's the right path. And that's the path where you can choose to be different. And where you can imagine right now through your intention on two or three things that you want to do differently, that you want to show up in a way that is moving more towards your best self. And when you look at that person, you just see what challenges you may face, where you may have just to take a deep breath in and then choose to respond and not react, how you want to see certain people without any longer judgment or rejection, but more compassion and acceptance already rehearse on this new path, your new way of being, seeing yourself moving through the holidays with being a source of happiness, of harmony, of joy, of well-being, being yourself self-reliant, kind, but also someone who is supportive, Someone who is understanding, who is curious, who is interested, who shares openly and is also receiving openly what others share. See yourself 
in whatever version feels like a huge growth and a huge opportunity. And then after the holidays, see that person, your better self, sitting in the chair, smiling at you. And you can ask that self, that better self, for any advice on how you can go through the holidays as that better self. Maybe there are some suggestions that come from that future self. Maybe there are some insights that that future self can share with you about potential little pitfalls or situations that in the past you may have struggled with and give you suggestions on how to deal with them better. By you seeing how this future self feels satisfied, content, empowered, and deeply fulfilled with giving the gift of the best self, you may find yourself even more motivated and more excited to choose that right fork in the road. Because in the end, it's simply about treating yourself like somebody you deeply love and care about so that you can treat others how you want to be treated by them. I wish you a wonderful pre-holiday season with wonderful and powerful intentions, clear ideas on how to be that gift so that you don't have to go through those nightmares that I and I think many others used to have before, during, and after the holidays. Until next time, goodbye.